Hello and welcome to Rings Check. I'm Barry and we are back with the fifth scenario, third that comes in the Black Riders box um, for Lord of the Rings, the living card game, where I go over the story that the cards tell, where it relates to the story in the book, uh, and then um, I talk a little bit about the cards that I've chosen, but I will cover the actual mechanisms of the deck and the, the thought behind the deck in a playthrough video. So please join for that if you want to know more. So let's start. Um, so Frodo's just awakened after the Battle of Weathertop. So that Naz he was stabbed by Nazgul um, and then promptly passed out. Um, so we're not sure what happens after that. But he wakes up, uh, much to the relief of his companions. He finds out that the Black Riders have retreated, though Aragorn tells him that this is bad news because they believe the blow they've dealt to Frodo is deadly uh, and they will return another night for them if the party cannot flee. So this evil wound uh, caused by a Morgul blade, right, this pale blade here, is the main mechanism for the scenario, providing a countdown as Frodo gets more poorly by the day. So each round he has to lose a life and if he loses all 15 life, uh, it's the end of Frodo. So Aragorn does what he can to heal Frodo uh, with some Athelis. Uh, now it's no good for my deck because I don't have any Dunedain or healers. Um, although technically I've got Elrond but he's on end for a round. Um, but the party plans to escape south over the Old Road, which was first mentioned in the uh, Knife in the Dark chapter, and into more wooded land. So they need to get away and into cover as quickly as possible. Uh, for five days they travel with no sign of their pursuers until they must cross this last bridge. So this is a bridge across the River Horwell. Uh, however, Aragorn fears it will be protected against them. Like, they have to cross here, so chances are the Black Riders will be waiting. As he approaches the bridge and scouts it out, he finds a small elf stone. It's a signal which gives him confidence that they can cross safely, although perhaps not much further beyond. And it's worth noting that Aragorn is right. Three Black Riders did hold the bridge until Glorfindel drove them away and left the token to let them know it was safe to cross. So the path becomes more difficult as they get to the other side of the bridge and cut cross country again. Uh, and the next day Aragorn realises that they've travelled too far north up into the Etten Moors, which is troll country. Uh, Frodo's health begins to fail more and more. And after another night, they won't have to head back towards the road to continue. Uh, at this point, Bill the Pony is starting to look a little more hale, a little more healthy, and was becoming quite adept at finding paths for the uh, group to travel down. Uh, they wonder what kind of life Bill had before that this adventure, this travelling, was better for the little horse. Bill's path led them um, to a troll cave, which looked abandoned. Uh, but they carefully progressed until Pippin and Merry came running back, terrified of the trolls they just saw. However, it was the middle of the day, and as we all know, trolls turn to stone in the sunlight. Uh, assuming you've, of course, read The Hobbit. Uh, and it turns out the group had found none other than the trolls that uh, had captured Bilbo and company uh, all those years ago. Uh, so they were already turned to stone in the sunlight, having argued over how best to eat the, the dwarfs and Bilbo. Uh, all through the night. Um, they continued on and the group eventually reached the road again, but not long after they heard hooves approaching. The light clippity-clop did not sound like the Black Riders though, and they were relieved when Aragorn went out to meet Glorfindel. So here's some timely aid. Uh, this is the only Glorfindel, and you might notice he's a spirit character. I don't have any spirit heroes, but I'll talk about that in the deck tech. And... Um, he brings good news. Gandalf's in Rivendell has been for the past sort of nine days uh, with Elrond and um, they were going the right way. Uh, with that news though, Frodo had a, you know, seemed to have great relief uh, but then the adrenaline obviously wore off and he began to feel the effects of his wound more greatly or more keenly. Um, Glorfindel administered what aid he could uh, but they would still have to get him, uh, Frodo to Rivendell to heal up. Uh, the best way to get him there was would be to travel on his horse, so he shortened the stirrups on Asphaloth, 
and bade Frodo to, to ride on without them. But Frodo would not leave his friends, even though he was arguably the primary cause of their danger. They kept travelling together until they almost reached the river, the Bruin Inn, um, and just beyond there is Rivendell. But then Glorfindel senses the Nazgul approaching, uh, so the enemy is upon them and they have to race to get to, to Rivendell. Um, fly, he called. Fly, the enemy is upon us. And Asphalth ran, with Frodo attached and the rest following closely behind. So the riders are galloping towards Frodo, coming out of gaps in the trees. If you can picture the movie. And um, Frodo holds up and, and uh, freezes atop his mount. Um, unsure what to do next. Uh, Glorfindel tells Asphaloth to run swift and take Frodo to safety and the white horse sprang to life and bolted out the door. So at this point we've got all the riders uh, kind of coming in behind us. There's like six riders coming in. Uh, you've got your different enemies in the deck here. You assume the Witch King's among them. Uh, your ring wraiths and your, your fell riders. All of which are Nazgul. Um, but as Frodo is running and as I was uh, carrying him, more riders come out to chase him. But as he looks back, they're no match for the elven horse and he's outpacing them towards the river. But as he looks up, he realises that there were other Nazgul ahead to ambush him and they might beset him before he reaches the river. A breath of deadly cold uh, pierces him as Asphaloth passes in front of the foremost rider. So not quite a piercing cry, but a piercing breath. Um, but the horse makes it past and into the Bruin Inn and over the other side, uh, Toot Sweet. Um, Frodo turns to face them. Um, as he's aware, you know, there's no reason that the Nazgul can't cross the river the same way he did. The Black Steeds, however, have kind of balked at going into the water in the crossing, but spurred on by the foremost rider, the horses advance. Uh, and Frodo brandishes his sword as the riders taunt him. As they're getting further and further across the river and nearing the other side, a rushing of water can be heard, loud water rolling many stones ahead of it. The flood comes down the river, uh, looking as a plumed cavalry of waves, and they swept into the riders, washing them downstream away from danger. Then Frodo feels himself pass out once again. Uh, so quite a lot of passing out from Frodo uh, in these last couple of chapters. Um, hopefully, hopefully he'll be fine. But that is the end of book one uh, in the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, of course, it was never intended to be the finishing point of a book. Uh, all three books should have been published as one. Um, but some of the differences between the book and the film, if you're only familiar with the film, you know, in the book there's no Arwen travelling with Frodo, uh, instead that is Glorfindel's role, and similarly it's not Arwen who summons the, the Bruin in to, to wash the riders away, but actually Gandalf and, and Elrond, uh, from a distance, a sneak attack, you might say, and here we'll try and fit in one of the, the best combos uh, certainly out of the core set and, and generally in the game, sneak attack Gandalf uh, into the deck. So uh, a couple of cards that aren't really represented. Pathless Country is just a generic countryside card that's kind of put in there. Uh, and this is the only one um, primarily with the art, right? So that's when they, they arrived at Bree. Um, but there is still power in the terror being pursued by... Uh, the Black Riders the whole time or expecting them at any point certainly will fray on your mind and here the allies can uh, you know reduce their willpower uh, to be on the quest and leave but there's not too many other allies got a couple of powerful allies in the form of Glorfindel, Elrond, Gandalf um, but really we want to be not paying for them so I'll talk about that in the deck tech. So as I said, that is the story as told through the cards. Uh, hopefully that's useful to, to help you get immersed in when you're playing. Um, next video, I'll go through the deck that I'm going to take through the game uh, or through the scenario. And we'll see how it performs. The countdown on an evil wound is, is quite tricky at times. Uh, if you get stuck, even for a couple of rounds, it can very much press down. Um, 
on what you're you're able to do uh, if there's too many enemies on the board and we will have to talk a little bit more about the second encounter deck in fact maybe I could have a little look at uh, what these burdens are in case they come up so there they are so weight of the ring um, Frodo realizes during this chapter that uh, he put the ring on it on Weathertop not from his will but you know he's being manipulated by the will of the ring the will of Sauron um, being panicked here I'm not 100% sure if that's supposed to be I mean it looks like a pony more than Asphaloth right so um, I, I'm not sure where that falls in, into the story uh, here fear of discovery well I mean that applies to a lot of it the art here is showing them uh, hidden in the, the first scenario um, which name I've already forgotten, <laughs> um, hiding from the, the that first black rider on the road, uh, overcome by terror, that looks like the top of Weathertop, um, and finally eaten alive as they're crossing the the marshlands. Um, what do they get when they don't get when they can't have Hobbit? So none of these are particularly for this scenario, but these will be burdens that might get um, that will come into play in future scenarios. So that's it. Um, join me for the next one where I will play through the, the scenario uh, with the deck and talk a little bit more about the deck tech. Until next time, this is Rings Check signing off.